afternoon or good evening, whatever time it is that you're joining me for this video, thank you once again for clicking on the Penboy Roy Fountain Pen Review channel. And welcome to the first ever Fountain Pen Award show. You are going to get down in history with me as the first Fountain Pen Award show ever. It's a historical moment that probably nobody will ever remember or care about, but that's okay, because I'll remember it and so will you. Now before I get started, I do want to make a disclaimer. The thoughts and opinions that I say here tonight belong to myself and only myself and do not reflect the opinions and thoughts of the collaborators that I asked to join me here today. Let me introduce myself to you guys. My name is Roy. I am the owner of the multi-hundred dollar corporation known as the Penboy Roy Fountain Pen Review Channel. I started in December of 2017 and since then I have gotten a lot of support from you guys and I really appreciate it. Now for those of you who follow me on YouTube and watch my channel, you guys know that at times I can be a little bit crass or sometimes say some things that are somewhat offensive, but it's all unintentional. Now, due to the fact that I have so many people collaborating with me here today, I decided I'm going to dial things back just a little bit and I'm going to do my darndest not to say anything that is offensive to anybody watching here today. That does not include people not watching. They can go to hell. That is, of course, until they do start watching, in which case they no longer qualify and they shouldn't be offended, right? If at this point in time, anybody here is offended by what I'm saying, please feel free to stop watching, but then go to hell. No, I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I joke. I joke. I kid. It's what I do. So this award show has been in the making for some time. I had intended for it to come out a lot sooner, but it didn't work out that way because a lot of things got in the way. I'd gotten sick. I even lost my voice. And man, let me tell you, I tried everything I could to get better. I tried sleeping more. I tried drinking more fluids. I tried exercising. I tried resting more. Nothing worked and I got desperate. So I bought a big bag of Ricola cough drops and I downed those suckers. I was popping those things back one after another. I'm talking like a desperate dude who just discovered Viagra. I'm throwing those things down over and over. But you know what? There was a label on the package that read, excessive use may have a laxative effect. And I ignored it. <laughs> Let me talk to you about regret. <laughs> My God, they were not lying. They were 100% on point. Now, the medicinal effects were exaggerated, but the whole thing about the, the, the cough drops giving you the butt squirts was 100% on point. Do not ignore those because the cleanup for that mess was a lot like what you would expect cleaning up an oil tanker spill is like with a cocktail napkin. It was messy. <laughs> Now I know what you're thinking. What in the hell does any of this have to do with fountain pens, right? Well, I'll tell you, it has everything to do with fountain pens because after such a traumatic incident like that, you got to write about it. And I wrote about it. I had to decide what pen I'm going to use. Now, studies have shown that the sense of human smell is one of the strongest links to human memory there is of the human senses. It has something to do with the way smell interacts with the brain and whatnot. So knowing this, I needed something to bring me back to that moment. And what better choice than a noodler's pen? I mean, my God, the noodler's pen smell is so strong. It had me reliving that whole moment. I was like tased. I was in like a state of total convulsion. I was like Christopher Walken in that movie Dead Zone, touching children, seeing things. I was going through it all over again. And you know what the other benefit about using a noodler's pen for something like this is? Let me just say this. The situation I was in when I was in that particular situation left me with no running water or soap, so I couldn't wash my hands. And the benefit of a noodler's pen is it doesn't smell any different after than it did before. So, no one could tell. No one would know. 
Having said that, though, I couldn't keep the pen. I just, after something like that, I can't look at it the same way. The smell keeps bringing me back to that intense, messy incident. It was not pretty. So I gave it away. I gave it away to that annoying coworker that thinks they are the very first person to ever say to you, <laughs> my pen cost me 30 cents. <laughs> I feel like saying to him, no, it didn't cost you 30 cents. You know how I know? Because I watched you pick it up after I finished using it to scoop up a dead bird and throw it in the trash. <laughs> so you didn't pay for it. I was going to tell you, but then I decided not to once I saw you starting to chew on the cap of the pen. <laughs> Enjoy hepatitis, stupid. I'm joking. I'm joking. I didn't actually give it to him. I wouldn't do that. No, I actually sold it to him at below retail costs, so I got my money back and uh, he got a good deal on the pen. <laughs> I know, I know, you think it's cruel. Don't worry, he didn't end up keeping it. He didn't end up keeping it. He actually gave it to his dad. Dad's a great guy. And it works out, all right? Don't feel bad because his dad's actually a proctologist. And I actually did them a favor. I actually did his dad a favor because how often is it that a proctologist can actually say Especially about a pen. <laughs> At least my tools don't smell like this. <laughs> Not very often, so I actually did him a service. In the end, it all worked out. I kid, I kid, I'm just joking. Look, I actually love Noodler's pens. I think they're great. I really respect Nathan Tardif. I've never met the man, but he's accomplished a lot. Anybody else think he looks like Gary Sinise? Or am I alone on this one? He looks like Gary Sinise. Look it up. Anyway, like I said, I love Noodler's pens. I like ripping on them because they smell like butthole. <laughs> but you have to admit, having a nice, interesting, beautiful looking Noodler's pen with its funky smell and all, is a lot like being married to a beautiful, rich yoga instructor who farts all the time. <laughs> and it's never easy or comfortable to explain why someone or something smells bad. You know what I mean? Like, something can look bad, right? You can walk into work, shirt all torn, bloody eye, broken nose, blood all over your face, bruises, and you could be like, oh my God, I just got mugged. Whatever you say, got into a car accident, everybody be like, oh my God, are you okay? Can I do something for you? But if you come to work and you smell like poop, <laughs> there is never a socially acceptable excuse, reason, or answer that'll get someone to be like, well, you know what? Okay, I'm not gonna wipe anymore either. <laughs> no, nothing you say will work. I mean, you could drop some of the most dramatic, life-changing, intense drama on them. You could be like, dude, my wife, she, she left me. She took the kids, cleaned out the bank account. She's taken the house, the dog, the fish, and, and she ran off with another guy. I don't know why this is happening. Your buddy will be like, uh, maybe he doesn't smell like poop all the time. <laughs> there will be no sympathy. And you know what? Your buddy would be right. Why? Because, listen, I'm no Don Juan. And I am nobody who can be considered a ladies' man. But let me tell you this much. I know for damn sure that the words poop and romance don't work well in the same sentence together. <laughs> I don't know, maybe for you it does. For the majority of people, the two of those things combined don't really work well. And this is why I have so much respect for Platinum, because they went above and beyond They went above and beyond with their 2018 release of the 3776 limited edition Kum Poo. They came out with a pen whose name sounds a lot like two human excrements that should never be mixed together or used in the same sentence. But they went above and beyond. They just didn't go simply using the words in the same sentence. No, they put it into the same word. That is ingenuity. 2,500 pieces sold out overnight with the name Kumpu. No one called him out on it. 
but it boggles my mind. I mean, I love Japanese pen makers and Japanese pens, but you have got to admit, the Japanese have gotten us to say some crazy shit over the years. You guys remember Namiki, right? You remember the Arushi lacquered pens that they make? They made one where they had a dude who went to school for 40 years, maybe 20 to 40 years. He would go to school as a kid, and then after school, he would go to an after school to learn trade. And then after the after school, he went to an after school for after, after school. And then after that one, he went to another after school for after, after, after school. That was after, after school. <laughs> Sitting there drawing pictures with a little poker using gold dots until it turned into an image, an artistic dynamic image. And Namiki released a pen that had chickens on it. Chickens. And what did they decide to call it? They decided to call it the fighting cocks. Not one single person in the marketing meeting was just like, hey, let's Google that and see what comes up. Let me tell you what would have happened. When they Googled fighting cocks, you're going to come up with a whole lot of redirects to all kinds of different porn sites. Don't you think maybe somebody should have been like, hey, wait a minute, guys. Let's dial back on this name. Just how scary is the head guy at Namiki where he's like, we are going to call it Fighting cocks. <laughs> and everybody's like, oh, gee, I don't know about that one. That doesn't seem... Uh, we're not going to say nothing. We're just going to keep our mouths shut. Now, once again, I hope you guys enjoy the show. I hope nothing I said in this introductory monologue has offended you. And if it does, please feel free to fill out a hurt feelings report and email it to penboyroy at gmail.com where I will be for sure to print each and every single one of them out and make good use of them in the event I ever decide to binge eat Ricola cough drops ever again. <laughs> now, moving on to the category awards, the first category is going to be called the Mad Scientist Award, and this award is going to the pen that brings to the table the most innovations seen in fountain pens. And to present the nominees for the Mad Scientist Award, I present to you my fellow reviewer, Waski Squirrel. Well, hello. Waski Squirrel here from the Banana Belt of Southwestern North Dakota. Uh, I inhabit this frozen wasteland with about 700,000 other people. And I've been asked to bring you the nominees for the Penboy Roy 2018 Mad Scientist Pen of the Year Award. Uh, I suppose I was picked because in my non-pen related life, I am a physics teacher. So let's dive into the pens. The nominees are the Estabrook SD and the MV Converter. I'd like to introduce the Estabrook SD, a pen that we made for you, the pen consumer, with all the little details that you guys love. The Estabrook SD is a modern version of what we feel Estabrook would be today had they never gone out of business. Having an MV adapter allows the user to have that connection to the past by using all those vintage nibs in a modern pen. It was our way of bringing the vintage era into a modern pen. The Pneider Le Grand Bellicea and the Hyperflex Nib. So this is the Pneider Le Grand Bellicea Gemstone Edition and it has the uh, quill nib which is actually kind of like a new invention with Pneider. It's something that they just were introduced in this particular line that provides a lot of line variation when you press down and give the tines a little bit of pressure to allow some more flow to get on the page here too. The Monte Grappa, Monte Grappa and the Ratchet Filling System. Monte Grappa, Monte Grappa. The pen's so nice, they named it twice. It is so good you need to say it twice. Monte Grappa, Monte Grappa. And it's a piston mechanism. Monte Grappa, Monte Grappa. The internal piston that's in there is proprietary to Monte Grappa. Monte Grappa, Monte Grappa. And while it's in an affordable pen, Monte Grappa, Monte Grappa. It's the exact same one you'll find in $5,000, $6,000 limited editions that Monte Grappa does. And it comes in lots of lovely colors like this light lavender type color. Ooh. Losing the cap. Monte Grappa, Monte Grappa. The Visconti Rembrandt and the new calligraphy nib. 
the Visconti Rembrandt in the Azure Blue. And one of the nice additions to the Visconti Rembrandt line has been the calligraphy style nib, which is a stainless steel nib that has a flattened top and gives you tremendous line variation at the same time. And now, back to Penboy Roy for the win. Thanks, Waspy. And the winner of the Penboy Roy Mad Scientist Award goes to the Esterbrook SD and the MV Converter. The next award category is the Penboy Roy Most Savage Budget Pen of the Year Award. And this award will be given to the pen whose value outweighs the monetary cost of the pen. To announce the nominees of Penboy Roy's Most Savage Budget Pen Award, let's go to Aziza of Gourmet Pens. Hello, everyone. Welcome. My name is Aziza. You may know me as Gourmet Pens out there on the interwebs. And I am thrilled, honored, super excited to have been asked to announce the Penboy Roy 2018 Most Budget Pen of the Year nominees. So thank you, Penboy Roy, for this honor and privilege. Very exciting. I hope you enjoy this fun initiative because, like, who doesn't want more fun in the pen world? And if you don't, then too bad, you're gonna get it anyway. Now, enough of my chit chat. The nominees for the Penboy Roy 2018 Most Budget Pen of the Year are as follows. Number one, Twisby Go. The Tiz, Tiz, Twizbot Tizby Go. It's a pretty spacey looking pen, like something out of the Jetsons. Pretty simple, easy to clean, and good for all ages. Number two, Parker Jotter. Everybody's favorite ballpoint pen is now transferred over to the dark side as a stainless steel nib fountain pen. This is the Parker Jotter, which they call the T-Ball Jotter, whatever you want to call it, but this is a fountain pen with a stainless steel nib, cartridge converter system. At the price point that it's at, it's a beautiful starter's pen that has its elegance and classic appeal about it. Number three, online switch. Oh, just the Switch Plus. That's the book. That's the name. Okay, Switch Plus. It's a nice, affordable pen, relatively new. Check it out. The online Switch Plus. It has a, uh, a touch capacitive uh, stylus, so you can use it with your uh, various mobile tablet devices and smartphones. And it's a cartridge converter type filling system. Comes with a funky looking cartridge here, but uh, you can use uh, international cartridges or the Coeco converter would also work as well. Number four, Diplomat Magnum. Diplomat Magnum. It has a smooth touch surface, snap cap, stainless steel nib, slightly faceted body, an ink window that's here so you can see the, the level of ink that's available to you. Good starter pen, pretty affordable, and... This pen's been around for about 40 years, but apparently everyone just discovered it. Has a nice sort of like high-tech sort of look on it. And number five, we have the Nemosign Singularity. The Nemosign Singularity. This pen is... Lots of different colors, and it's space-themed, and it's out of this world! So, let's see who the winner is, and remember, kindness is free, so throw it around like confetti. Thank you, Aziza. The winner of the Penboy Roy Most Savage Budget Pen of the Year Award goes to... The Twisby Go! The next category is called the Most Beautiful Acrylic Pen of the Year Award. And this award is a big one. It goes out to the pen whose acrylic is so beautiful. It overshadows pretty much every other acrylic out there and mesmerizes upon first sight. To announce the nominees of the Penboy Roy Most Beautiful Acrylic Pen of the Year Award, let's go to Mike Madison of Ink Dependence. You hate ads, I hate ads. I'm Mike from Inkdependence.com and the Inkdependence YouTube channel, and I'm pleased to help Roy announce the 2018 Most Beautiful Acrylic Pen of the Year nominees. First, the Conklin Nozak. This is the Conklin Nozak. Which is another vintage throwback. 
uh, which comes from the words no sac. Then you named it well. Not meaning that these pens don't have testicular fortitude, they did not have a sac filling system. They used a internal piston mechanism. Piston fill. And you have a magnetic cap closure. Magnetic cap, that sounds like fun. The Paniter Le Grande Beleza Gemstone Collection. The Paniter Le Grande Beleza Gemstone. The pen itself is absolutely magnificent. The colors are mesmerizing which is resin made with fancy marble made in Dante's Inferno. Made in Italy. Made Italy. in Italy. What else do you want? For a few hundred dollars, you have a fantastic looking pen made in Florence, Michelangelo city, amazing. Beauty. The Esterbrook Esti. Esterbrook, now that's a brand I know. Myself and Carrie went through millions of nibs and hundreds of acrylics to choose for you the right package. Having like classic tortoise, which is a color that every pen wanted to be back in the day. Uh, a blue that was, you know, had depth to it and a shine and a polish. And then classic black that was so black it just looks like, it looks like polished ebonite. And Visconti's Vertigo. The Visconti Vertigo. This pen reminds me of the U2 song, which kind of has that weird beginning where Bono counts from 1 to 4 and then 14 in Spanish. Well, I don't really know what to say. But in the sort of same kind of pleasantly weird way, this pen has the opera shape, but has like slight taperings that go down with the facets of the barrel. It has a magnetic cap, and it has also another kind of like weird kind of little feature here too is this overlaid nib which is stainless steel but with that gold overlay that's on top there. Good luck to all the nominees. Back to you Roy. Thanks Mike. And the winner of the most beautiful acrylic pen of the year award goes to the Conklin Nozak. The next award is the Penboy Roy coolest pen of the year award and this award goes to the pen whose qualities encompass not only just value over cost, not only just the look of the acrylic, not only just the writing experience and the amount of work that went into making the pen, it encompasses all of those things. And to announce the nominees of the Penboy Roy Coolest Pen of the Year Award, let's go to David from Fig Boot on Pens. David here with Fig Boot on Pens. Uh, I'll make this quick so I can get back to playing Red Dead Redemption. But I'm here with the nominees for Roy's coolest new pen release of the year. Uh, and the pens that Roy has nominated are Conklin Classic. The Conklin Classic, which is a Goulet exclusive. And I have to say, you couldn't come up with a better name for that nib. It's a nice vintage throwback pen, very Americana. I'm a big fan. The Monteverde Ascenza. So this guy is the Monteverde Ascenza. This pen I know Roy has not been able to stop talking about because he is enamored with the quality cast acrylic that is faceted. It's very difficult to make resin pens with sides. With a beautiful painterly sort of color that goes throughout the entire pen. The beauty is set in the, yeah. in the details, so if yes. you look it up close, yes. it looks like one solid color, but the more you actually turn it around, you yes. can see that it definitely looks like this very high quality marble yes. shading. I know Roy likes this pen. He likes it a lot. And Similar pen to this costs $400. Exactly. And this pen is in a $100 range, so it's an excellent value too. I'm so, I wouldn't be surprised if it wins a few awards. The Estabrook Esty. Hashtag Fester Crook no more. The modern reincarnation of 2018's Estabrook brand comes in the form of this SD fountain pen. This pen can take vintage nibs. And this is the newest design that comes out of Kenro Industries. And uh, it's got a classic styling, which I can appreciate. And the Panider Avatar. Here we have the Panider Avatar. Up for best picture. Which I believe is more exciting than the James Cameron movie. It's such a beauty. It looks like a masterpiece. This is, uh, this is not a movie award. This is a pen. If you look up close, you can see the buildings in Italy. Florentine design. 
Wait. Okay. Yes. Maybe that wasn't a good idea. The nib <laughs> is, is uh, stainless steel. It's fantastic. It works with a cartridge or a converter. The uh, material is excellent. And what's unique about this pen too is this new clip. Just overall, just a very stunning pen. Peniter's entry into the world of fountain pens and a nice pen to add to your collection as well. The winner of the Penboy Roy Coolest Pen of the Year Award goes to the Monteverde Ascenza. The next award is called the Penboy Roy most savage pen of the year award and this award is awarded to the pen that is just a total and overall savage the way it writes the way it looks what it brings to the table to announce the nominees of the penboy roy most savage pen of the year award let's go to dr sbre brown <laughs> I, S.B.R.E. Brown, obviously the last Jedi. But anyway, this is not about me, this is about Penboy Roy and his fantastic initiative, and I have the honor of announcing the nominees for the Penboy Roy 2018 Most Savage Pen of the Year Award. Here's the nominees. Now pay attention because I'm only going to say this once. Okay? Number one. The Estabrook ST. Number two, the Pinader Le Grande Bellezza Gemstone Collection. Number three, I've now slowly gotten used to doing number three and not number three in the European manner. So, number three, the Monteverde Essenza. Number four, the Conklin Nozak. And number five, the Twisby Go. Now, if you forgive me, I, uh, I have to train Ray. Thank you, Dr. Brown. The winner of the Penboy Roy Most Savage Pen of the Year Award goes to... The Esterbrook SD. I don't want to brag too much, but I have to say that I completely created the Esterbrook SD. Yeah, through the whole process, I mean, when I was coming up with all, all the ideas, you know, we, we'd send Ryan out, and he'd get us like from Starbucks. And... I like to give Carrie Yeager a little bit of credit, but uh, he really didn't have much to do with it, the design of the, of the pen. When it came to the design and all the aesthetics on the pen, you know, I mean, I felt like this is really how it should be, and I was so glad that when we made those final decisions that, you know, the things that I felt were important were what came to pass. And Carrie and I battled over a couple of the decisions, but ultimately, uh, my favor won every single time. You know, when you don't know much about pens and how they design and how they write, you know, it, it makes it difficult. I can't say that he had any good ideas at all. Uh, he tries in his best way, but I mean, it's, 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 he's not at my level, unfortunately. You know, I mean, I felt bad because Ryan's ideas got crushed over and over again. Carrie really didn't even come up with the fountain pen day. Uh, program that was something that I kind of devised in my head and he's kind of maybe a little bit of a vegetable The truth is he really doesn't even know how to fill a fountain pen, but it's okay You know, I mean we like to take care of everybody. I basically taught him every single thing that he knows so I was glad I could be there especially when I showed him how to fill a fountain pen for the first time. That was Penboy Roy Savage Pen Awards for pens released in the year 2018. I hope you had a good time I hope you enjoyed it. I know I certainly did. I want to thank everybody involved for taking the time out to help me spread the fountain pen virus and most of all, I want to thank you guys watching. All of this is all for naught without you guys. Love you guys. Be well. Be safe.
Anyway, Ronald, thanks so much for having me on. I'm gonna sing myself off. To dream the impossible dream. You will like this video. All right?